Welcome to episode 49 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I will show you how to install and use the latest WAN VASE model so you can generate videos from a prompt, use an image to create a video, or even use a video to control another video. Make sure your Comfy UI is updated or it will not recognize the new nodes. Go to the manager and click on Update All, but that doesn't always work, so if that's the case, go to where you install Comfy UI, look for the Update folder, and run the Update Comfy UI bat file. Then open Comfy UI and also run Update All again to update all the nodes. Wait for the installation to finish and restart when it asks you to. Let's open the first workflow. There are three workflows you can use. You can get them all for free from Discord. Check the description for more info. Let's start with the uh, text to video workflow first. I put everything you need to run the workflow in this note. For the nodes, you only need one node, the guff node. You should already have it installed, but if not, go to the manager, open custom nodes manager, search for guff and install it. Restart comfy UI after that. So with nodes, it's simple. Let's move to models. I used a smaller model because generation is very slow. So I used a Q4 version. Uh, you can try bigger or smaller models, but the bigger the model, the more time it takes. I'm talking minutes, not seconds, even on my RTX 4090. If you wanna see all the models, click here. You'll find both big and small models. You can try a Q8, or if you don't have enough VRAM, try a Q3, which seems to be the smallest. If you want the best quality and have the best video card, Go with the 16 version. You need to place them in the Diffusion Models folder. So I'm downloading the Q4 model. I go to the Models folder, look for the Diffusion folder, and place the model there. Then we need a clip model. I used a small model, the FP scaled version, which is different from the one used for Flux models. There's also a bigger FP16 version if you want better quality. Choose one and place it in the text encoders folder. Next, we need a VAE for it. Download the VAE and put it in the VAE folder. That model will load in this node. Now we have all the models we need. After all the models have finished downloading, go to edit and select refresh node definitions so Comfy UI can detect the new models. Now you can see the models appear here and you can select different versions if you downloaded more models. We have the clip and the VAE. We also need a positive and negative prompt, a WAN base to video node, the K sampler, a trim video latent node, which is used to trim a specified number of frames from the beginning of the video sequence. And finally in Comfy UI, a create video node and a save video node. This way you can save the video without needing extra custom nodes. By default, it creates a folder called video and saves the videos there, but you can change that. I've added some settings for width, height, and length. It works well with these dimensions, but you can experiment with other sizes. Just don't go bigger than 1280 pixels. Even at that size, you'll wait 40 minutes or more for one video. You can adjust the width and height from here. Use multiples of 32. You can try different values, but I'll use a small size since I don't have the patience to wait so long. In the workflow, I used 16 frames per second. The values you use depend on how long you want the video, but don't go over five seconds. You can set the frame rate here. I'll use 49 frames for three seconds of video. Here's how it's calculated. Multiply the number of seconds you want by the frames per second, which is 16 in my case, then add one extra frame. So three seconds of video times 16 frames per second gives you 48 plus one extra frame. He makes 49 which is the value I added here. Let's test the workflow. I'll use ChatGPT to create a prompt. Since it keeps getting smarter, most of the time, you don't need any special formula. You just tell it to give you a prompt for an AI video model, describe what you want, and you can adjust things like the camera movement if needed. It gave me this nice prompt that I can now copy and paste into Comfy UI in the positive prompt box. Um, make sure the sizes and video length are set I'll just use three seconds for the video length. Now let's run the workflow. If everything goes green, you did it right. You can see my card here. The generation is really slow, even on my system. Once it finishes, the result looks like this. Let's play it. I'm usually not a big fan of text to video because I can't control the style or match my vision. I prefer image to image. 
Here's another example I made earlier with the workflows you get from Discord. To transform this workflow into an image-to-image -image workflow is quite easy. Double-click on the canvas and add a load image node. I'll load this portrait of the woman. Let me copy the image, go to ChatGPT, paste it there, and ask for a video prompt for this image. Now, because I did the cartoon bunny before, it gave me a similar style prompt. So I asked for a real video, not 3D, and it adapted the prompt for me. Now I can copy the prompt and paste it into Comfy UI. So we have the prompt and we have the image, all that's left is to connect it to the workflow. Just drag a connection from the image output to the reference image input, that's it. Very simple. Make sure you adapt the sizes to match your uploaded images ratio, and then we can click run to see what we get. Takes around six to seven minutes to generate a video, but stay until the end of the video to see a workflow that speeds up the generation time by more than double. The speed also depends on the models you're using. So from that list of models, try different ones to see which is faster. Some might be faster on your PC, even if they are larger because of how they're built. In general, the smaller the Q version, the faster it will be, but you'll start to lose quality. Okay, so for the first generation, we got what we asked for, but the hand isn't great and has some mistakes. I can run the workflow again with a different C to see if that improves. The second try is better, but still not perfect. What causes those glitches? If we look at the image, there's no hand visible. So the AI starts adding things in the image that weren't there originally, like the hand that just appears out of nowhere. To avoid waiting minutes and getting a bad result, one thing you can do is write your prompt so it only moves things that are actually visible. So I asked not to include hand movement, only to move the head and hair, since those are visible in the image. It gave me a new adapted prompt. Now, in theory, it should work better. Let's test it. This is the result. This time, we didn't have any glitches, so it seems to work better that way. Let's open another workflow, the video to video workflow that you've probably been waiting for. For this one, you'll need an extra node. If you've used ControlNet before, you probably already have it. If not, Go to the manager, search for AUX, install that node, and restart Comfy. This workflow looks very similar to the Image 2 video workflow, with one exception. We need a video to control the motion as a reference. I have this video of the woman. I didn't have real videos to test with, so I used a previously generated video. There's a preprocessor node you'll recognize from ControlNet, like Canny, Depth, or Pose and it connects to the control video, so it's very similar to control net, but you don't need an actual control net model. So whatever image you put here, it will follow the motion of the video. I added a prompt where I explained the motion subject and the motion from the control video, then I ran it, and this is the result. As you can see, the video and the reference video are similar. Uh, I used only three seconds for my video, and the original video was longer, so it didn't capture all the motion until the end, but it seems to work fine. I tried running this workflow on the cloud on Running Hub to see if it would work. It recognized everything except the model. So I clicked on model, searched for WAN, and found the WAN Vase Q6 version, so I used that. The result was this cute bunny, but since I used HD resolution, it took around 20 minutes. The bigger the width and height, the more time it takes. I was about to finish the video when I got a message on Discord to test Alora for speeding up the generation. So I did a few more tests and got something to work. For this workflow, you'll need an extra node called RG3, so you can use uh, this Power Lora loader node. Install that one from the manager. Then we need a Lora. You can download this Lora from here and place it in the Loras folder. Then just refresh node definitions, and you can load the LoRa here. A strength of 0.25 seems to work okay, but you can try different settings to see what works best. So that LoRa node goes just after you load the model, and you add it before model sampling. The clip also goes to that node before going to the positive and negative prompt. One important thing is these settings. Not all settings work. This one worked okay for me, steps between four and six. Without LoRa, you usually have 20 steps. For CFG, I used six. I used Euler Ancestral and Beta for Scheduler. 
but maybe you can find better settings. I tested this on the cartoon bunny and used this prompt explaining how it eats the donut. The result was this one. Now, this Laura really speeds things up. Some disadvantages are that it seems to change the colors and adds more contrast to the video compared with the image. Also, sometimes the motion isn't quite there when using a LoRa. Sometimes there's less motion, but that also depends on seed and prompt. And after a few more tests, I found that I can fix the contrast problem with an extra node. If you don't have the easy use node, you can install it from the manager. Then just after the VAE decode, I added the color match node. I use these settings and it uses an image reference. That's the original image we added with the load image node. For the target, it's all the frames that come from the VAE decode node. Now, if we compare the image with the actual video result, it's pretty close. We don't have that strong contrast anymore. Uh, it's not identical, but it's much closer to the original. So this is the quality you get from the WAN model, but how does it compare with a paid model like Kling AI? Here is a generation using the same image, but with Kling AI. The paid one still seems to be better than the free one, at least for now. If you found something useful, please leave a like and a comment to help me make more tutorials. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to the membership, and a special thank you to the legends on the higher tier. Thanks again, I wish you a great day, and I'll see you on Discord.